What's up guys, Steven here, welcome back to another video. So my video from the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul where I bought a Rolex Replicon hidden camera got really viral. Plenty of views, plenty of questions from you guys. So I decided to go one step further and buy a high class replica on the internet. So I researched a lot in forums and at this point big thanks to Alex for helping me to get one. So today we'll also visit my good friend George, who is a Rolex collector, and we'll have a closer look at the differences between a real and a fake Rolex. So. Let's go. Okay, let's face it. Sometimes the thought of spending thousands of dollars on a luxury watch can seem a little foolish. Today, counterfeit kind of watches are a big business, and many of them look virtually identical to the real thing. In fact, without opening the case, some experts have been routinely fooled into believing a fake watch was real. But is there anything wrong with buying a replica watch? Rolex timepieces are one of the most popular luxury items in the world. So consequently, there's a huge market for replica or fake watches. Most of these replicas are made in China, but research shows that the production is spreading throughout all of Asia and other regions too. In my last video, I traveled to Istanbul and spent almost 500 euros on two Rolex replicas. I didn't really care about the price I spent, because I knew that a lot of you guys are interested into it. It was a really interesting experience to have a closer look at the Grand Bazaar and also take a look behind the scenes of this replica business. But today we're gonna go one step further. I did a lot of research in the last months, mostly in a forum called replicauren.pro and I found this guy, Alex, who is the admin of the forum and he knows literally everything about replicas. So if you're looking for a high class replica, get in touch with him. He told me that the best value watches are around 200 euros. There are better high-end replicas, but the price to performance ratio on these isn't that good. But I have to say, the high-end ones look crazy real. My good friend George, who is a watch collector, has two models which I really like, because they are classic. We're looking here at a 114060 2016 Rolex Submariner no date and a 14060 Swiss only dial one from 1998. So I asked Alex for a replica that looks identical to this model and after two weeks I found a package in my mailbox. The watch came from the European Union, but I guess it's being produced in China or Asia. With this watch I visited George and he showed me some differences and let me also film his real Rolex as well. He was surprised on how good the quality of these fakes actually is, but if you look closer, you do see differences. So let's check them out. First of all, the movement. To be honest, it's very hard to tell a fake apart from a real when you have a look at the movement. There's a huge difference in accuracy and also the reserve. On my Rolex replicas from Istanbul, they start to display wrong time even after only one day, while a real Rolex has for instance 50 to 70 hours reserve time, which is the time the watch still functions perfectly without wearing it. On the replica it's pretty good and two days are no problem, but this only applies to good replicas with a Swiss movement. If you get a cheap one with a Chinese one, you're basically screwed and it's really annoying. The weight is also hard to tell apart, but we noticed that the replica is a bit heavier than our real Rolex for some reason. Rolex replicas have also the serial and model numbers like on a Canon Rolex, but on a real one, they are deep and perfectly marked in solid very fine lines that will shine in the light at an angle like a diamond cut edge. Conversely, the numbers on many fake or replica watches are typically made up of faint tiny dots due to a lower quality marking process. In other cases, these numbers on counterfeit watches will have a sandy like appearance from being acid etched as shown in the video. The watch hands look almost identical, but are a tiny bit thicker and if you look it up with a macro lens, you can see that the structure of the luminous paint is way rougher and not that even like on the real one. An interesting element of Rolex watches is the paint. We are of course talking about the luminescent paint that is used for the luminous parts of the watches, which are the indices, hands and the loom pipe on dive watches bezels. This is also present on the replica, but lights up not that strong. When it is first manufactured, the dial of an original is more or less perfect. So if you see any uneven fonts, inconsistent spaces between the lettering, smudges and a misspelling on the watch, then that is a big red flag and definitely a sign 
to start looking further into its authenticity. But on the one from Alex, it looked quite good. But I noticed that the font is a tiny little bit bigger and more bold on the replica. In 2002, Rolex began micro-etching a tiny crown logo at the 6 o'clock position on the crystal that protects the dial. But this is something you can also find on replicas. Also this replica has the tiny crown. The material itself of the crystal is pretty good and really scratch resistant as well. We tried to scratch it but we weren't able to do it. Then we tried to scratch the numbers on the watch bezel and there we got a checkpot. On the real Rolex we have a ceramic bezel with platinum numbers and while the bezel on the replica is very scratch resistant, I'm not quite sure which material it is. However, the dial numbers are just painted on the replica, so if you try to scratch them, the paint will come off. Also, if you have a look at the crown, you will realize that its crafting is a bit more rough than on the real Rolex. The real Rolex has a super smooth crown. Adjusting the time of the watch works basically the same. We can also see that there is a ceiling inside, but we are gonna test later if the watch is waterproof. However, you feel that adjusting the time on a real Rolex goes much more smoother. You also need to be careful about the strap if you're going to buy a real Rolex, because many people buy a counterfeit watch strap to save some money when they sell the watch, because even a nice strap can be as much as two grand. The strap of the replica feels really good, but if we look closer, we can see that the material is different. Most watches today use stainless steel graded 316L, but Rolex being Rolex, the company uses a unique blend of high quality 904L stainless steel made by their in-house foundry. While regular stainless steel is good against corrosion, there is still the possibility that it can corrode. The Submariner was basically a diver's watch before it became mainstream. So Rolex wanted to make sure that the corrosion resistance is top notch. That's also what we checked on the replica. I left it outside in a few rains for some days and I noticed a tiny little bit of corrosion under the crown of the clasp. There is nothing to worry about, but it shows the difference in material on these watches perfectly. The clasp also comes with the same engravings like the real one and the engravings are looking incredibly real. Also the quick adjustment of the strap is working fine, but not as smooth as on the real Rolex. But the final question is still unanswered. It's a diver's watch, so is it waterproof? That's why I jumped into the pool with George and checked it out. After one hour in the pool, the watch was still perfectly fine. No water or steam inside. It seems to be waterproof, but the real Rolex is waterproof up to 200 or 300 meters, and I highly doubt that this watch would survive such a dive. Overall, it's impressive how replicas have evolved, and I did even read that the factories who make them are using older machines that have been sold from Swiss watchmakers and Rolex. This replica here is at the $200 range. Basically, there are five grades of quality. Usually, grade one, grade two, and grade three Rolex replicas are so-called Swiss-made replicas by the dealers. Contrary to popular beliefs, only one of those grades is really Swiss-made. The rest are made in Japan or somewhere else in Asia. Overall, these watches are not bad at all, but you definitely get a better watch if you buy a local quality brand like for instance Seiko. But if you're looking into the iconic Rolex design, this watch is worth the money. After doing so much research about these replicas, I really think about getting a Submariner from my local dealer, but the waiting times right now are crazy. The big question remains, is Rolex losing money because of all these replicas? And I personally don't think so, because People who buy replicas aren't even in the target group for Rolex watches, as they mostly wouldn't be able to afford one anyway. But still, they are counterfeit goods, and that's another topic. So let me know what you think about these watches. Would you buy one? Do you maybe have one? Leave your comments down below. And as always guys, I'm Steven from Tech Magnet, and I will catch you in the next one. Have a nice day and bye!